Bowel cancer is the third most common and second deadliest cancer worldwide. In this video, I'll tell you how to prevent it. What you can do to avoid getting bowel cancer. I'm about to share some crucial information in this video, plus the eight warning signs to watch out for. Signs that might indicate a tumor in your intestines. Colorectal cancer. Let's start with symptoms, then move on to prevention, risk factors, and how to avoid them. There's a safe, effective way to prevent bowel cancer. But what signs suggest you might have bowel cancer? The first sign I'll highlight is a change in bowel habits. For instance, you used to go to the bathroom daily. Now you're going three times a day. You have diarrhea. Or if you used to go daily, now you're only going once every four days. You're constipated. So a change in bowel habits. Not necessarily constipation or diarrhea, but it can alternate between the two. Many have diarrhea for days without a virus or other cause. They didn't eat anything spoiled, for example. You might have diarrhea for a week. Then you're constipated for a week. Then diarrhea returns again. So bowel habits change without any clear reason. You haven't changed your diet, for instance. You weren't constipated and started eating more fiber. Your habits improved. And now you're starting to use the bathroom daily. But that's not the case here. There's no apparent cause. This is the first point I want to emphasize. Bowel habit changes occur in 65% of colorectal cancer patients. So it's crucial to pay attention because many people don't worry about it. They think it's normal. They say, oh, my body just works like this now. In reality, it is indeed a warning sign. The second sign is feeling like you haven't fully evacuated. Often there's a change in stool shape called ribbon-like stools because there's a blockage. The tumor is actually obstructing. We call that feeling tenesmus. Feels like you haven't fully emptied. It's also a crucial warning sign. The third warning sign is blood in stool. I'll mention both types here. Digested blood, also called melena, it's black stool, has a distinct odor. You don't see blood but notice color change. A darkening of the stool and also fresh blood. Blood you can actually see in or around stool when wiping. Fresh blood in stool is a warning sign. Other things can cause fresh blood too, like hemorrhoids, more common than cancer, but it's still a warning sign. Don't ignore frequent bleeding when pooping. You need a medical evaluation if you have this symptom. And why is there this difference? Why do stools sometimes lack blood, but can darken? It depends on the location of the bleeding. If it's bleeding far up, the intestine has time to digest it. So the blood will come out already digested. And digested blood appears as darkened stool. If the tumor's near the end, you'll see fresh blood. So you won't necessarily see blood directly I know many will ask about the fecal occult blood test. You've surely heard of it. It's a very common and widespread test. It has uses, but not for colon cancer prevention. It falls short compared to colonoscopy. So it doesn't replace colonoscopy. Let me explain why. Often, intestinal tumors bleed intermittently. They don't bleed constantly. You might test when it's not bleeding, falsely thinking you're fine. This is what we call a false negative. When bleeding exists, but the test misses it, so it can't replace colonoscopy. This test can give false security, a feeling that all is well. You feel safe, but you're actually bleeding. The test just failed to detect it. Don't fall for this trap. It's a common mistake with colon cancer. Symptom number four, another warning sign is abdominal pain. It can be a cramping pain. Depending on the tumor's location or if it's near the end of the intestine, it can be painful when you have a bowel movement. Many people think pain during bowel movements is normal. Actually, it's not. You shouldn't feel pain when you go to the bathroom. Agreed? So this isn't normal. It should be a warning sign. This pain can manifest in different ways. The most common is cramping. Patients often mention this, but also general abdominal discomfort, that feeling of increased sensitivity. So abdominal pain is our fourth sign. Number five, weight loss, reduction in weight, you haven't changed your diet, you haven't started exercising, you haven't made any changes to lose weight, you haven't started any new medications, that could cause this effect, and you've lost weight, you've lost 10% of your weight in six months. This is defined as a warning sign. Whoa, hold on, this needs investigation. Colon cancer, it can cause weight loss through various mechanisms, 
One reason is it can produce inflammatory substances, which can make you feel nauseous. You might vomit as a result. It can also cause blockages depending on location. This can make it hard for you to eat. Also, the tumor can consume energy. That's right, some cancers have this characteristic. They cause weight loss, partly because you eat less, but also due to its other function. It increases energy expenditure in weight loss without obvious cause. You need to investigate. Bowel cancer is one that can cause this type of symptom, and sign number six is fatigue, general discomfort. Cancer can reduce your energy levels, but also with bowel cancer, it can lead to what we call anemia due to bleeding as well. Because you lose blood, you end up losing iron. The most common type of anemia in bowel cancer is iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia has a trait. Beyond iron reduction, she has small red blood cells called microcytosis in the blood count. One parameter we use is precisely the MCV, mean corpuscular volume, and this MCV in iron deficiency anemia due to iron deficiency, which bleeding can cause, will have a reduced MCV less than 80. It's also a warning sign for this type of anemia. If there's no clear cause, colon cancer must be considered to investigate why this is happening. I recall a case I saw a patient with extensive anemia tests, including several advanced exams. In reality, this patient had anemia because she was bleeding, losing blood. This can alter hemoglobin levels, causing a decrease in changes in fatigue and overall well-being. Always stay alert and investigate to rule out intestinal causes or any other apparent reasons. Speaking of tests, many ask about occult blood and the CEA carcinoembryonic antigen test. It's a tumor marker for colorectal cancer. Sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Let's do this marker test. High means cancer, low means no cancer. Simple, right? But it doesn't work that way. This test isn't meant for colorectal cancer screening. It also doesn't replace colonoscopy. That's a common misconception. Many patients request this tumor marker test to check for colorectal cancer. However, it's not actually used for that purpose. So what is the carcinoembryonic antigen test for then? It's used to monitor those already diagnosed with colon cancer. It helps track if levels are rising, if there's metastasis, or if the tumor has returned. We use this test for monitoring, not screening, as it can give many results. What's a false positive? High test values, but no cancer, causing unnecessary stress. False negatives can also occur, giving false reassurance when cancer is present. Some cancers don't increase the carcinoembryonic antigen. And sign number seven. Before I go on, is this video helpful? Are you getting good info? If you like this, subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications to get alerts when I post. I discuss topics like diabetes, thyroid issues, and potential cancer signs. I've also made a video about stomach cancer, so I cover various health topics. If this interests you, subscribe, hit the bell, and give this video a like. Let's aim for 30,000 likes to show the video's relevance and spread this info further. Sign seven, paleness, shortness of breath, and reduced physical ability due to anemia. I'll include anemia symptoms here in warning sign number seven. Sign eight is excessive gas and abdominal bloating. This depends a lot on the tumor's location, but many patients say, I ate little, but I feel full already. My belly is swollen, bloated, and I have excess gas. So pay close attention to these signs and symptoms. How can you protect yourself and avoid colon cancer? To do this, we need to understand the risk factors. I'll divide these risk factors into two groups. What we can't change, there's not much we can do about these. I won't discuss these factors much as there's little we can do about them. These include age and certain inherited genetic syndromes, some specific gene mutations, greatly increase your risk of colon cancer. I'll also discuss how to protect yourself from this later in the video, but there's not much you can do about these factors. Age is another factor. The older you are, the higher your risk of colon cancer. So how can we take action? How can we prevent it? First, eat a diet rich in fiber, fruits, and veggies with fewer processed foods. Also avoid preservatives, nitrates, and nitrites. Avoid processed foods high in sodium and saturated fats. Now you're asking, 
If I eat salami at a meeting, will that give me colon cancer? No, it's not good to go to extremes either. I'm talking about people who eat processed meats three plus times a week. So it's crucial to avoid these foods. It's easy to eat them often, which increases your colon cancer risk. You eat turkey breast once, then salami, then at a meeting, more processed meat. So it's easy to eat these foods three or more times a day. I suggest avoiding them completely. It'll be great for your health. Plus, these foods are also high in sodium. We know most people consume more sodium than recommended. What's the recommended amount? 2 grams of sodium or 5 grams of salt per day. That's what the World Health Organization recommends. And many people consume more than twice that amount. In the United States, for example, average consumption is 11 grams. In Europe, it's also 11 grams. In Brazil, Argentina, and Chile, it's 10 grams. So it's also double. Be careful with salt, especially in processed foods. Nitrates and nitrites are linked to increased cancer risk. Adding chia or flax can improve gut health and reduce colon cancer risk. That's the recommended amount. 20, 25 grams daily provides this prevention. I like adding it to yogurt. Dairy can protect against colon cancer. Surprisingly, it's the opposite of what many claim. You often hear online that milk is inflammatory and should be avoided. Only avoid milk if you're intolerant or allergic. In that case, you'll need to avoid it. If milk gives you diarrhea, then yes, you should avoid it. But most people, 95% in fact, can benefit from drinking milk. Studies show that for those without restrictions, Milk can even be anti-inflammatory. Isn't that interesting? Always choose skim milk to avoid saturated fats. Got it? If I like it, I add chia seeds, returning to the topic of fiber, chia flax. When eating fruit, I add a teaspoon about 5G to avoid fiber overload. So it's quite important. Fiber improves gut health, lowers colon cancer risk, and enhances meal glycemic index. See how your body processes this? For diabetics, this is particularly beneficial. Your body will improve metabolism if you add these fibers to your diet. Another way to protect yourself is through physical activity, as sedentary lifestyle is a risk factor. Why is bowel cancer increasing so much in younger people? Not just due to inactivity, but also because of poor diet and obesity. Weight control is also a measure to protect yourself from bowel cancer, a major risk factor for many cancers, including breast, prostate, stomach, and bowel, is weight control. Obesity raises cancer risk even without other health issues. Increased fat tissue boosts cancer chances. This information is really important to note. Also, don't smoke. Smoking greatly increases the risk of bowel cancer. Alcohol is another risk factor, so avoid alcoholic beverages. This is controversial, as some studies show one drink a day may not increase cancer risk. It also might not increase cardiovascular disease risk. So if you don't have liver issues like alcoholic fatty liver, one drink a day might be okay without consequences. I prefer to avoid alcohol completely, just like I do with processed meats. So what can we really do to prevent it? You've seen how to protect yourself with healthy habits, right? But there's one way you can actually prevent bowel cancer. Usually bowel or colorectal cancer develops from a polyp. And for a polyp to turn into cancer, it can take up to 10 years. In some cases, it might take a bit less time, but this is the average time it takes for a polyp to become cancerous. So it's important to routinely get a colonoscopy even if you feel fine. There's a lot of misinformation online claiming colonoscopies are dangerous when they actually have many benefits. It can even prevent cancer by removing polyps before they become cancerous. Just think about that benefit. Also, if cancer is detected early, the chance of cure can be up to 90%. So besides prevention, it also allows for early diagnosis. It really is an exam with numerous benefits. Don't listen to people who claim colonoscopies are risky. In fact, it's a very effective measure for reducing colon cancer. But at what age? When should you start getting colonoscopies? There are two groups to consider. Remember what I mentioned earlier? People with familial syndromes or genetic conditions have a higher risk of colorectal cancer. For those with a family history, screening typically starts 10 years before the age their relative was diagnosed. For instance, if a relative was diagnosed at 45, the person should start screenings at 35.
In some syndromes, doctors might recommend even earlier screenings. These individuals have an even higher risk of developing colorectal cancer. Without family history or genetic risk, screening starts at 45 as per American guidelines. Some places still recommend starting at 50 years old. However, studies show benefits to starting screenings at 45. So if you're 45 or older, talk to your doctor about getting a colonoscopy. Remember, other tests don't replace colonoscopy, not even rectosigmoidoscopy. Rectosigmoidoscopy only examines a part of the intestine. It's less thorough than a colonoscopy. Cancer might be in areas rectosigmoidoscopy can't see, giving a false sense of security. Don't substitute colonoscopy. It's proven effective, as is the fecal occult blood test. What's the interval? How often should I get a colonoscopy? It depends on your history and colonoscopy findings. Sometimes it's every five years, sometimes three, sometimes more frequently. There's no one size fits all rule. It varies based on findings. On a scale of zero to 10, how would you rate this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more videos like this. Don't forget to mention your city. Tell me where you're watching from and I'll send a hug. Now I have a video suggestion for you. It's about fatty liver disease. Do you know the signs and symptoms of fatty liver? Like colon cancer, you should know about fatty liver. It affects 30% of people. That's billions of people, folks. Click here to watch the video. Take care. See you next time.